Good evening, we are back down the farm for part two of assembling the ZTEC turbo engine. I'm not doing anything too exciting, but I thought I'd show you anyway, because you know, I like to take you along for the ride when I can. Um, basically, I'm just welding a, uh, a dash 10 or AN10 fitting onto the front of my sump pan. Um, this is just like the upper alloy pan of a blacktop ZTEC. That's what I'm gonna be using on the engine. Um, this is actually my third attempt at welding that on. I shouldn't really disclaim this, but I'm gonna anyway. Um, the first one I tried welding on, I couldn't get it to puddle, couldn't get it to weld nice, got really, really frustrated with it all, spat my dummy out, threw it all on the floor, turned everything off, turned the lights off, locked up and went home. Um, I come back down here a couple of days later, cut that fitting off because I completely destroyed it, tried again. Second fitting, exactly the same, couldn't get it to work. So I got some scrap alley out, cleaned it up, tried to weld on that, could not weld for love nor money, couldn't work out why, I was getting really pissed off with myself, you know, proper like one of them days. Then I realized I was out of gas. So there was actually gas coming out the tip of the TIG torch, um, but it was like the dregs at the bottom of the bottle. So it wasn't like, I don't know, pure enough to weld with, but there was like no pressure on the gauge at all. So I've just got a brand new bottle of Argon. Um, I fitted it all up. It's down there. Got all my flow meter right, got all my settings right and everything. Cleaned everything up. Everything's clinically clean as it should be. Hopefully, hopefully, I can just weld it on this time. I'm actually gonna have a little practice run on some scrap alley first, and then I'm gonna weld the sump. So um, yeah, let's crack on. Let me assure you, I ain't no professional welder, but that I am happy with. I'm never gonna be doing it for a day job, only for like my own bits and bobs, and you know, I help some people out every now and then. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's have a go of the sump. <laughs> Please don't muck it up. Well, let me assure you, I ain't no professional, but that is on. I was getting really frustrated because I couldn't do it straight away, but I sort of calmed myself down, adjusted a few settings, turned the current down a little bit and just went out a little bit slower. And I got it to stick, look. I can carry on with the rest of the engine now. Right, see you tomorrow, bye. And two months later, part two in assembling the engine. Whew. Nice uh, lint-free cloth, as you can tell. It's an old bed sheet. Right, let's get the sump on. New gasket. <laughs> Ford LB2. It's a genuine Ford sump sealer. You apply it, well this is actually, this is where I apply it. On the corners, here and on both sides of the gasket as well because if these sumps are gonna leak, they're gonna leak from the corners. They always seal fine here, and they always seem to seal fine here as long as you get them on square. So I put LB on every four, on all four corners, both sides of the gasket. You don't have to do it, but that's the way I've done it. I've never come unstuck. And I have noticed that if you strip apart a full ZTEC engine that's never been torn apart before, they always tend to have sealant in them corners, so that's why I'm gonna replicate it and always use genuine full sealing because it's, it's really good. All right, let's crack on. Sump's on, tightened it all down. I didn't talk it down, I just done it by feel because you know I know how much to pull it down by. Um, I must admit though, being completely honest, first time I fitted it up, I realized that I hadn't cut the wings out of the sump and they were fouling on the ALP stud and nut bolt. So I had to uh, cut them out, clean all the sump again, refill the gasket and then fit it all up. So yeah, now fit this bit. Um, there's an oil pickup in this because I run external oil pump kit. So no strainer fitted, leave that open. And fit this sump. So yeah, let's do that next. Got the bottom pan on and I've got an audience. As you can tell, we have loads of work in today. That's why I'm building this engine. Now the bottom end's built up. Right, flip it over, start on the top. Yeah. Right, 
So now the bottom end's all done. Well, I'll say the bottom end, all the sump and the pan's all on. I'm now gonna start on the top. Cleaned it all off a little bit, fitted my uh, block dowels. I've had to drill them out um, because I'm running these. Uh, these are M12 studs. Um, they're M12.1.5 at the bottom, and I can't remember what the top pitch is, but basically it's the thinner pitch at the top so that the, the thicker pitch at the bottom bites well into the cast iron block, and then the thinner pitch at the top um, gives you more clamping force to pull the head down. So yeah, this is what I'm gonna run. So I had to drill out the um, dowels in the top of the block. So yeah, right, let's get the head gasket on. So this is the head gasket I'm gonna be using. It's genuine fold. Um, it's nothing special, there you go. There's the part number. If you wanna copy that down, feel free. Ta-da. It's literally just a, um, it's a two liter focus head gasket. Not like a Mark 1 RS or SD170 or anything like that. It's just the standard two liter petrol. I've always used these and they've been fine with boost. So I'm always gonna to continue to use them. So yeah, let's get the head gasket on and then uh, get the cylinder head on. So, so uh, I've got the head gasket on, all ready to take the cylinder head. This is my cylinder head, by the way. Um, so it's actually a proper, genuine Mark 1 Focus RS cylinder head. Not that that makes any difference, by the way. Two lit heads are pretty much the same. Um, it's had some porting work, obviously. A little bit on the exhaust sides, not too much with the um, opening up the exhaust ports because they don't need that much work. Just the back of the valves. Um, it's had a little bit on the inlet side. Again, the back of the valves uh, not been opened up massive. Um, so yeah, this is the same head that I run on my old engine when it was making like a consistent like, solid 700 horsepower for quite a while. Um, it's also got exactly the same camshafts in it as well. I'm not going to just, you know, I'm not going to say what camshafts I'm running. I need to keep some secrets in life. Um, let's just say they're not really designed for this kind of application, but they just really work. Um, you can see the size of the lobes. I'm not going to go into the duration and the lift and all that. But yeah, they're made by cat cams. Uh, I've also got cat cam single valve springs. It's all been shimmed up. Three, three angled valve seats and bronze guides and all that crap. Um, so yeah, that's the head I'm going to be using. Um, it's been drilled out for M12 because um, obviously you need to, you know, run in M12 studs. The actual holes in the head where the head bolts go need opening up. Um, so yeah, it's not been machined to take Cosy spark plugs, which is a bit old school now. I run a, a different style of spark plug which fit in the standard seat, which is always handy. So yeah, let's get it cleaned up. I'm gonna strip it down and give it a wash because it's been upstairs in storage for quite some time. So I'm gonna take it all apart, take all the lifters and the cams out. Uh, I'm gonna give it a good scrub and then clean it all off and then we'll, uh, we'll get it on and talk it down. Let's crack on. So as I've already said, head gaskets on. Giving the cylinder head a good old scrub and a clean. It's a little bit lumpy in places, but it's clean where it needs to be clean. You know what I mean? Right. Let's get that head on the block. Cool, this feels like a long time coming, you know that. Line up the locator holes. Beautiful, not right going the home as I expected though. There she goes. Bit cool. Awesome. Starting to look like an engine, isn't it? Right, now I'm gonna put the head bolts in. I like to do it this way around because I do. I like to just put the head on, then put the head bolts in. Don't ask me why, but I do. Right, let's crack on. Evening. It's another day, as you can tell. I've probably, my appearance has changed ever so slightly. I've had a shave and uh. I want to say sorry because I got carried away. I started bolting it together and then I remembered I need to YouTube it. So yeah, this is where we're at. Got the uh, stun nut kit in. It's all torqued down, it's all tight. Got my cams in, nipped all the caps down. Um, assembled it with Lucas Assembly Lube. This is like a really thick, gloopy oil um, that I put on all my shelves and my cams and stuff like that. So it just tends to hang around a little bit more on the first startup until you sort of get oil pressure, you know? Um, Jamie's here tonight. Cracking on with his little Fiesta. His body kit was falling off a bit, so. Couple of self tappers, sorted it right out, didn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna talk these down. I have to get the book out, can't remember what they are. 22 new meters from memory. Oh, I'm a 
was completely wrong. It's 19 newton meters. 10, then 19. So, let's do 10 first. Trusty snap on digital torque wrench. Right. Right, let's talk them down. 10 newton meters first. Start in the middle. This is going to be such a gentle pull. One. What I think I'm going to do now is start building up the front of the engine because obviously I'm going to need to get the timing belt on, start dialing it in. I think I've got some cam pulleys somewhere. I can't remember what I put them. The proper nice ones as well. All right, I'll go find them and uh, I'm going to crack on. Right, so all the caps are torqued down. Everything's tight. Um, I fitted a new gasket to the water pump housing. Bolted all that on. Put the crank pulley on. Put the little spacer plate behind the crank pulley on. Do not leave that off. Trust me. Um, I've nipped the bolt in for now. Um, I fitted the, I'll show you. I'm just gonna do static timing to start with. So I use the long pin, they have a ZTEC timing tool. Screw it in there till it's flush. And then basically turn the crank clockwise until it goes dunk and it hits it. Then you know, number one piston, number four piston are at TDC. Um, so now I'm gonna um, fit the belt loosely and put the cam pulleys on and stuff like that and get the plate in the back of the head. And uh, yeah, hopefully get it timed up and just see if it turns over, make sure nothing locks up. But yeah, right, let's crack on. Right, got the belt on, got the cover on. I've just nipped it all up loose, took the pin out the front of the block, took the plate out, turned it over, lined the plate back up, put the plate back in. Well, actually, sorry, put the pin in the block first and hit the stop, then the plate slid in. Um, it does need a bit of adjusting because the belt's a bit slack up there. Um, time belt tensioner, IKE. Um, I've always just used an IKE tensioner. I've never bothered changing the other pulley. Although I know he does the whole kit with a really nice belt and a little extra pulley down here. I've just never bothered. I've just always run this to about 8,200 RPM. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I am absolutely shattered. I genuinely think I'm coming down with something. So I'm going to cover this up, I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to go home for now, so yeah, catch you later. Evening, it's another day, feeling a bit better now. I say it's another day, it's literally just turned into another day. As you can see it is nearly one in the morning. It's my daughter by the way. <laughs> um, and I'm cracking on with the engine. Uh, I've timed it up a bit, I haven't finished dialing the cams in. I'll probably do that on the dyno, just to you know, swing the cams here, there and everywhere to see how it reacts. Um, I've adjusted the belt, got the tension on that just how I want it. I've started putting a few more bits on, put the rocker cover on for the final time now. Just doing the bottom timing cover and then put the top timing cover on and yeah. It's getting there slowly. Right, let's crack on. Right, it's currently half one in the morning and I'm calling it a day. But, I have done something that I'm pretty proud of. I've mocked up the, uh, the manifold and the turbo. It looks pretty awesome. Check it out. <laughs> now I always forget what size turbo this is, but I think it's the 6666. Don't quote me on that, but I need to double check. T4 flanged, externally gated. Zoo speed made me the exhaust manifold. Right, just need something to put it in now next video right that'll do like share subscribe cheers guys bye